ASMR. And how does it feel? You're sitting alone, headphones on. The room is quiet, but not for long. A soft whisper brushes your ears. A gentle tapping fills the space around you. And suddenly, a strange sensation starts. At the top of your scalp, it trickles down your neck, across your shoulders. That's ASMR. Short for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, ASMR is one of the most mysterious and fascinating sensations in the human experience. It's been described as a tingling feeling, a relaxing, almost electric wave that flows through the head, spine and limbs. But if you've never felt it, that description might sound confusing or even made up. But make no mistake, for those who feel it, ASMR is real and powerful. The term ASMR was coined in 2010 by Jennifer Allen, a cybersecurity professional. Looking for a way to describe this strange sensation she experienced during certain sounds or visual triggers. Before that, people simply called it brain tingles or head orgasms. Not exactly scientific, but the phenomenon is far older than the name. People have reported similar feelings from things like soft speaking, page turning, brushing hair, or even watching someone complete a task slowly and carefully. It's not new. We just didn't have a label for it. So what triggers ASMR? That's the beauty of it. Triggers are deeply personal. Some people get tingles from whispering, others from tapping, scratching, brushing, or role play. Even things like eye contact, hand movements, or the sound of scissors cutting paper can do the trick. It's about intimacy, precision, gentle attention, and above all, slowness. Unlike traditional media that bombards you with movement and sound, ASMR slows the world down. It focuses your senses. It creates a bubble of calm. But here's where it gets interesting. Not everyone can feel it. While millions report intense ASMR sensations, others feel nothing at all. For some, it's pure magic. For others, it's just weird. And that's led to one of the biggest questions in the ASMR world. What's really happening inside the brain? And why do some people respond while others don't? That's exactly what we'll explore next. Part two, what's going on in the brain? ASMR isn't just a feeling, it's a neurological event. When that tingling wave hits, your brain is lighting up in very specific ways. But here's the twist. It's not the same for everyone. Let's start with what we do know. In 2016, one of the first fMRI studies on ASMR was published by researchers at Dartmouth College. They scanned the brains of people who regularly experience ASMR while playing trigger videos inside the scanner. The results were striking. What they found was increased activity in areas of the brain associated with reward, emotional arousal, and social bonding. Specifically, the nucleus accumbens, the same region that responds to things like music, food, or affection, lit up during ASMR. The medial prefrontal cortex, which is linked to empathy and emotional regulation, also became more active. In simple terms, ASMR seems to activate the same brain regions that respond to things we find comforting, rewarding, or emotionally meaningful. There's even evidence it boosts neurotransmitters like dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. The brain's feel-good chemicals. This may explain why people often feel relaxed, sleepy, or emotionally soothed during and after an ASMR session. But perhaps the most fascinating element of ASMR is its connection to social triggers. Many of the most effective ASMR videos involve role play, a makeup artist,
artist brushing your face, a doctor gently explaining a procedure, a librarian whispering as she turns the pages of a book. These aren't just sounds, they simulate care. Researchers believe that ASMR may tap into deep-rooted neurological responses related to personal attention and affectionate interaction, especially those we associate with early caregiving experiences. Think about it as infants, we were calmed by soft voices, gentle touch, slow movements. ASMR might be reactivating those circuits, creating a sense of safety and nurturance, even if it's happening through a screen. Another interesting layer, brain connectivity. A study from the University of North Carolina found that people who experience ASMR tend to have stronger connections between regions of the brain responsible for auditory processing, emotional regulation and attention. This might explain why some people feel ASMR intensely while others don't feel it at all. Their brains are wired differently. There's even overlap between ASMR and a condition called synesthesia, where stimulation of one sense involuntarily triggers another. For example, someone might see colours when they hear music with ASMR. A sound might trigger a physical sensation, like tingles, along the scalp or spine. So, is ASMR a new form of sensory experience? Or just a modern rediscovery of something ancient and deeply human? The truth is, we're still learning. Even as ASMR explodes in popularity, with creators reaching millions of viewers, science is still catching up. There's no single explanation, no clear diagnosis, and no universal response. But the brain scans, the surveys, and the anecdotal evidence all point to one thing. ASMR is more than just a trend. It's a neurological state. One that offers calm in a chaotic world. And in that way, ASMR isn't just about what we hear, it's about what we need. Part 3. Why do we crave it? And what does it mean for the future? In a world that moves fast, ASMR slows us down. And that's exactly why we crave it. Let's face it. Our days are loud, chaotic, overstimulated. Notifications emails, crowds, news. Our nervous systems are on high alert almost constantly. ASMR offers the opposite. It's quiet, focused, gentle. It says, you're safe here. That's not just poetic, it's biological. When we listen to ASMR, especially in a calm setting with headphones, the body often shifts into a parasympathetic state, the rest and digest mode. This is the opposite of fight or flight. Heart rate slows, breathing deepens, muscles relax. It's a neurological green light. You can let go now. No surprise then that ASMR has become a powerful tool for people struggling with anxiety, insomnia, depression and chronic stress. Many users report that ASMR helps them fall asleep faster, sleep deeper, and reduce reliance on sleep medication. Others say it helps them regulate emotions, calm intrusive thoughts, or simply find peace after a long day. This craving, this emotional hunger, isn't just about tingles, it's about presence. ASMR forces us to slow down and pay attention to tiny details, to softness, to care, and in doing so, it becomes more than a sensation. It becomes a ritual. People build entire routines around ASMR, nightly wind downs, study sessions, anxiety resets. It becomes a space, often digital, where control is restored and chaos fades. So, what does this mean for the future? We're already seeing the lines blur between ASMR and mental health care. Therapists and wellness professionals are beginning to study how ASMR
ASMR can complement cognitive behavioural techniques or mindfulness. Some meditation apps have even begun incorporating ASMR features. Soft voices, environmental triggers, guided whispering. Beyond that, ASMR is entering education. Teachers are using slow, calming voices to improve attention. Some medical practitioners use ASMR style tone and rhythm to relax patients before procedures. Even marketing is changing. Brands now use ASMR style ads, whispering, tactile sounds, slow motion, to sell products in a way that feels soothing, not salesy. But as with anything powerful, there's a flip side. Some worry that constant exposure to ASMR could lead to sensory dependency, needing a certain type of sound to relax or even sleep. Others point out the growing sexualization of ASMR, which can blur boundaries and shift focus away from its calming intent. Still, for millions around the world, ASMR isn't just entertainment, it's therapy, it's company, it's comfort, it's mom. Reminds us that even in a hyper-connected, over-stimulated world, a soft whisper, a quiet tap, a single breath can still make us feel something. Maybe that's what ASMR really is. Not just a trend, but a digital echo of something ancient.